you can't sit with us. Raise your hands if this sounds familiar to any of you. When we were little children, we watched movies that showed us the different groups of students sitting in the school's cafeteria. They were usually classified as the cool kids, the nerds, the hipsters, the jocks, the gamers, and more. The main character will always seek to fit in and have a seat at one of these tables. And then the journey of self-realization starts. As repetitive as these movies sound, they hold important questions. Why do we always seek to fit in? And when does the feeling of wanting to belong start? Wishing to partake with others starts when we were little children on the playground. We may mirror the behavior of the dominant kids just to be accepted by them. Or we may show sympathy to the weaker children if we cannot make it with the stronger ones. As we grow older, we move on to a phase where we may alter our speech patterns, our tone of voice, and our language expressions just to be accepted by the small societies we are in. Some would go as far as having different personalities with different groups of people. By different personality, I don't necessarily mean a totally different person, but I'm referring to the rather minor changes in their personalities, changes that would help them fit into the group of people they are currently dealing with. So they end up having a home edition of themselves, an online edition, a job edition, a school edition, and so forth. And in a study conducted by Donaldson R. Forsyth, it was shown that a group consists of a minimum of two individuals who share something in common. Whether So by this definition, we understand that a group consists of a minimum of two individuals who share something in common, whether it's shared religion, culture, career, or anything both individuals agree on. A school group, for example, would include a number of individuals who go to the same school, attend similar lessons, eat similar lunches, and face similar challenges. They would spend more time together due to their similar interests and circumstance, and ultimately form a group. Personally, if I were to choose whether to be alone or join a group, I'd always choose to join a group. This is because joining a group would satisfy my need of belonging. It might also help me achieve goals that might elude me if I attempt them individually. The same holds true for the majority of the human population, where recent studies estimate that 50 to 75% of the population are extroverts who prefer to spend the majority of their time in the company of others. And the resulting sense of belonging is proven to have many positive effects on us. In a study conducted by the Better Health Channel, titled Strong Relationships, Strong Health. It was shown that individuals who are accepted by their groups have lower risks of depression and anxiety and have stronger immune systems and self-esteem. Thus, by simply being in a good, healthy social group, we, we secure a friend, a friend who we can rely on in times of friend, in need, a friend or a group of friends who can sympathize and help us get back on our feet after we have fallen victim to life's challenges. Similar results were co conducted by elderly nursing homes associated with the Brighter Kind organization in Manchester, UK. The association states that elderly people who were visited by family members and who were on good terms with other residents at the home had a stronger mental and physical health and a greater sense of belonging. Thus, by simply being in a good, healthy social group, we can ensure an easier life with a more purposeful living. In a study conducted by Donaldson R. Forsyth, it was shown that individuals who are accepted by their groups tend to be happier and more satisfied, while individuals who are rejected feel unhappy and depressed. Now, this is something that I have experienced firsthand. I was born and raised in Saudi Arabia. And when I moved to a new country, I left everyone and everything that I knew for 13 years and came here to Turkey, a place where I knew no one. For the first time in my life, I knew what it meant to feel homesick. At the beginning, I was left out of group, groups and was feeling lonely. So 
My first intuition was to seek to be accepted by classmates. At first, I was left out and not included. But eventually, I found a friend and got accepted into a group. Of course, that didn't happen in the blink of an eye. But the feeling of slowly getting accepted gave me a sense of comfort and by and by of belonging. Not all social groups are good and healthy. But how can you tell whether a group you are already in is a healthy one? Well, there is no definite answer to this question. But according to the journalist Stephanie Taylor, these are some signs that you have probably found yourself a good social group. You have loyal friends in that group. They always have your back and would stick with you through thick and thin. They are dependable and are ready to help you when needed. They are honest with you. They tell you the truth even when it's hard. A true friend would want you to succeed in life. Thus, that friend would tell you anything, even if it's hard. They would offer you advice that you are sure to have your best interest at heart. The time you spend with them doesn't have to be highly productive or even serious. I just can't tell you the amount of times my friends and I binge-watched an entire show in a single day. Some days are good, others are bad. A true social group should be ready for both. While I was going through the hardest experiences of my life, all I remember were my friends surrounding me and reassuring me that eventually everything will be all right. Finally, we are all different individuals with different opinions and beliefs. But once you have found a group of people with whom you can respectfully agree to disagree, then those are the keepers. Those are the people who care more about you than a single opinion you might have. Good social groups can benefit us in many ways, but, so can, but negative groups can also harm us without us even realizing it. Something we may not notice when joining a social group is us sanding down our personality, just to be accepted into that group. We start off by making small and conscious changes, such as the, wor the words we use or the way we dress. And if we don't gain that sense of belonging we are longing for, we move on to making conscious changes, such as the tone of our voice, our expressions, our hobbies, and other defining characteristics are, that define us as human beings. These changes might present as negative since they actively change our identities and who we truly are. Toxic social groups tend to put us down and make us feel insecure. That can affect our mental health greatly and cause it to deteriorate. But how can you deal with such negative social groups? You have to identify your current boundaries and then you set new, clear boundaries if the current ones are ineffective. And you should have direct conversation about what you perceive as unhealthy within the group dynamic. I know this can be hard and it will require a lot of courage, but trust me, your future self will thank your current self for reducing the number of days you have to endure under such to toxic social influence. Once you have identified the problem, once you are ready to deal with it, try to handle it at the moment. Think carefully about what you can and can't handle. But if these techniques don't help, then you know it's time to make a clear decision. You should either take a break from your current group and return to it later, or you may permanently leave the group and the negative effects it had on you, and hopefully seek a healthier group within a more promising future. We are all our unique and different selves with unique and different identities. We all have traits that would help us shine and show our true selves. Traits that would help us achieve our dreams and succeed for, with them. Just because some of us seek to fit in, that doesn't mean we have to exclude them. Why don't we accept everyone regardless of their differences? Let's create positive environments where members can grow and prosper. Let's celebrate ours as well as others' individuality and where what brings us together is a positive cause. Thank you.